Welcome to Healthy Cooking with your friend, Lady Italians. I'm Jim Dura. And I'm your own Dura. And today we have a very special guest, uh, Bill Lagat, who is uh, owner of Torrey Park Grill over in Geneva, a great, great restaurant, plus Club 86, plus some other restaurants uh, that we will also talk about. So we've got numero uno uh, restaurateur right. of the and, area. And, Welcome, and Billy. And particularly a very good restaurant in Geneva. A very good restaurant. We've and been we going there for 50 into, years. Yes, and we want to get into some of the history because we realize that Bill and Jim have a joint history of the area of Toria Park, your grandfather's. Right. Yeah, One at Club right. 86 and his fa- a gra- a grandfather right. dealing with Right. Really starting port, Tory Park for the uh, Italians in Geneva. So, ladies and gentlemen, today, everybody in here, including uh, Jim Senecro, well, all is. Italians. Well, he is. Yeah. Not fully, got All Italians. <laughs> Can't go wrong. <laughs> Can't go wrong. So, we also got some recipes for you today. Uh, and these uh, three of these recipes come from Wegmans. I came across something that they make. Uh, cauliflower into a cream that they use in pasta and I thought they were all crazy and I tried it and I loved it and we're going to be giving you those recipes plus my son Matt who lives on the west coast has come up with a tomato sauce that kids love this is getting love. vegetables and the tomato sauce to so make your kids talk- eat idea. something <laughs> healthy for a change but, yes. uh, but first and foremost Welcome, Billy. Thanks, uh, Jeff. And uh, we uh, we've known each other for a good number of years. Long time. Long time. Long time. And uh, and uh, he uh, uh, Tory Park, which used to be Pronti's. Correct. Uh, and right across the street is uh, Club Eighty Six, uh, that has been going on for how many years? Well, the Club Eighty Six actually probably about seventy years now. Yes. Yeah. But right. even before that, my grandparents were was there and. Um, you know, my grandparents followed the Lehigh Valley Railroad. Yes. Up right. from Pennsylvania. All right. And my grandmother, um, who was the businesswoman of the family, decided to make her homestead right where Club 86 is now because she had word that they were going to be building the Lehigh Valley there. Right. Mm-hmm. And the story goes that they built the house, and my, my grandmother and grandfather ran a little restaurant bar, and they used to... Um, uh, Service all the people on the on the on the railroad, you know, mm-hmm. the railroad workers, the um, people laying the tracks and, right. and whatnot. And the funny story that Nick Mass used to tell that my grandfather used used to sell a ham sandwich and a draft beer, and it used to cost a nickel. Oh my goodness! And Nick would wait a few minutes when he told the story, and then he would say, and he made money doing it. <laughs> I, the, so, yeah. So I think that's where it all started. Right. I think it is no. because that's what his father, his grandfather, did was bring the railroad workers up, and he, that, you know, and that was right in Torrey Park. It was where right, right in the Lehigh were. Valley Railroad Station. Right. That yeah, was well, right he there. would go over to Italy, bring uh, his paisans over here. Said, "I got a job mm-hmm. for you working on a railroad. <laughs> <He> says, <coughs> I'll, <coughs> I'll put some place up for you to live in. I'll feed you." And we'll go from there. Well, that's right. and that what's what started the whole right. thing. So they really were working side by side for the Italian it a, community. It was a great little Italian neighborhood, and everybody right. took care of each other and watched out for each other. And right, you know that's the way that's the way my father grew up. He was the the youngest of ten. Oh my goodness! And, uh, he was the uh, the only one in his family that was fortunate enough to go to college. Mm-hmm. And um, and that was I guess in the in the forties, you know, the late thirties and the forties. Mm-hmm. And your father is the one that came up with the famous Jimmy's Chicken, right? That's correct. Uh, let's, I know what Jimmy's Chicken is. I love Jimmy's Chicken. <laughs> let's tell the people what Jimmy's Chicken is. Well, it, it goes just way back. You know, my dad, uh, just you know, over the years that he was in the business, uh, from the nightclub business, um, there was always parties. He always did parties at the club. And in the beginning, you know, my father always liked staying in the back of the house, working in the kitchen. So there's people over the years that he was fortunate enough to work with. You know, a lot of good chefs. I can't remember all their names, but there used to be a chef from the Hotel Seneca. I remember my dad talked a lot about. I know that Emil James worked with my dad oh, God. Yeah, in, yeah, in the beginning. Yeah. Um, so there was a lot of good people that came through Club 86 as, as employees. Yeah. And I think my father learned a lot from all of them. Yeah. And he always had a knack for doing things in the back of the house. Yeah. 
And that's where Jimmy's chicken came out of, you know. Just and, and Jimmy's chicken is a half a chicken that is cooked so that it, when you eat it, it falls off the bone. Yeah. And it's got lots of flavor to it, and I remember that. Every time, I, I always, Well, we just always had a Del Papa reunion and we at Torrey Park. And right. part of the biggest part of the menu, because that's what they all remembered, was Jimmy's Chicken. Well, the, the biggest thing, as you said, is it's cooked. It falls off the bone. It does. And I can remember a wedding when I was 10 bar one time, and <laughs> one of the guests complained that her chicken wasn't cooked. <laughs> and my father, in a very nice way, you know, in his apron and his T-shirt, came out of the kitchen want to know where the guest was and he walked over and he picked her chicken off the plate and wiggled it and all the meat fell off. He, he says that chicken's been in the oven for like five hours. <laughs> so it's cooked but there was a little red mark by the leg there that she yeah, was, was yeah. but he you know and they laughed you know they yeah, laughed. Sure it. well <clears throat> I sure can remember uh, Club 86 and and uh, back when it was a nightclub and uh, you know the famous people that yeah. would come here. That was back in Samson's well, day. Well, Samson's day they did. And, and it was Chidiba, a you know, my dad t used to tell the story about, um, you know, from 1947 when the Club 86 opened, the the Club 86, not Legat's restaurant, when he built the 5,000 square foot room. Um, it was prior to television, yes. and the way that these entertainers used to sell their records is travel the country. Yes, right. And they used to catch the. Uh, the Lehigh Valley Railroad out of New York City, mm -hmm. and they would come up through the Catskills and wherever in Syracuse, eventually right. Geneva, and move right up into t t Toronto. Right. Okay. And my dad used to catch them coming through, and he hooked up with people in New York. It was a big agency, still famous today, the William Morris Agency. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of those contracts were people that were, you know, through the William Morris Agency, and they were playing all the clubs from. New York City, the yeah. Catskills, Syracuse. Yeah, and Syracuse all the way had to three rivers. That was another club that was close. And to Geneva at the time, because of the Army and the Air Force, right. or the Navy and the Air Force, I mean, seven nights a week, everybody was doing business. Right. They were out. They were, they were busing people to Syracuse and, and Rochester because and, Geneva couldn't handle it. And you had, they had people like Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett. Uh, Louis Armstrong. Buddy Rich. Yeah. My oh. dad said when Buddy Rich played the club, he was 17 years old. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And, um, he was so, I mean, when he had to pay him, he couldn't even pay, he had to pay his aide and handle all the money for him. Right. But he was just a kid starting out. And Tony Bennett, when he played the club, that was before his hits, his big hit song came out, I guess, I Left My Heart in San Francisco. Now, I'm right. telling these stories from people telling me. Right, sorry. but aren't they I could be a little bit story? wrong on some of the yeah, things. Yeah, but did, isn't that, those are wonderful memories. They really did are. Did Frank Sinatra play? No, not nope. Frank Sinatra. Okay. Um, but a lot of, a lot of big names. Yeah, Louis yeah, Armstrong, Nat King Cole. Um, the one that my dad really liked was Lionel Hampton. Yeah, oh, oh yeah, and the vibes, mm -hmm. yeah. And he right. used to tell, again, the story that when Lionel Hampton played the club you, and you were out in that dining room, it felt like the roof was going to come up because yeah. everybody was jumping and hopping. They were yeah. jumping up on the railings. Really fun, The fun whole place numbers. was jazzing yeah. up. That was, that was great. Now, t let's talk about Pronties Dash Torrey Park. Torrey Park. Park. And I okay. mentioned Pronies because that's what the name used to be. And uh, we talked about this before. I remember very fondly, and you do too, about the waitress that uh, served you at, at Pronies, Amelia. Amelia. Mm -hmm. And she used to come out and she used to sing right. and had a great voice. Right, right. right. She's, uh, yeah, she was a character. She was. She was, was. I mean, she she was, was part she, of the attraction she, of going. There's a lot of stories about Amelia that you probably can't mention on the, on yeah. the yes. show here. Right. 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 But, yeah. but she told you where to go if, if, <laughs> right. she, if that right. was on you her mind. You knew where you stood with her. There yeah. was no question. Yeah. And Pronies had good food. And uh, you took it over, and uh, well, you know the thing. The thing that I think is important to point out, whether it was Pronies Club Eighty Six, whether it was my family, the Lagats, or or the or the Perrys, or the um, um, the Honorados, mm -hmm. you know, that was their life. You know, my Aunt Mary, my fa my Aunt Mary, and some of the older women on the street, you know, this this is what they did. It wasn't jobs to them. It you know, when you go back in Pronies years ago, and you see all Mary Perry and Alice Honorado mm -hmm. and there would be three or four ladies, Italian ladies from the street. They'd be rolling meatballs. They'd be making knocks. It wasn't a job. It's yeah. it's what they did, and right. they and they worked hard, and then they played hard. Yeah, you know they used to like to play cards and you know yeah. go mm -hmm. to the racetrack once in a while, but it wasn't like it is nowadays. I mean, right. this yeah. was people were in there and they were just doing what needed to be done. Yeah, and you know, my I, I I tell the story that my aunt Mary she used to go out and sweep the sidewalks, and then she'd start on the street. 
and she ended up sweeping the whole street. You know, <laughs> who sweeps the whole street anymore? I mean, but that's what they all did. You know, yeah. the, you know, so it, that type of culture right, is where it, was. it all and it they was. served from what great food, and, oh, yeah. and you you're holding that gauntlet there, well, and you're serving great food. The, the food at Torrey Park, I think, for Italian food in the area right is now, the is the best. Is the I, best. I mean, I, you know, you go. So can you tell you tell us something about the menus and well, change? Well, we're, we're excited about it because what we've tried to do at Torrey Park is um, is hold a tradition, just like at Club 86. Right. There's items that were started by my dad and and started by the, the Honorados and the Perrys that, mm -hmm. you know, we want to hold true to and make sure we don't screw it up. But as you know, I, I see the title of your show is Healthy Cooking. Mm -hmm. So people's tastes changed over they the years. Have. So it's challenging in the restaurant business, especially nowadays with, with all the information available to everybody, is just trying to come up and stay in, in tune with every, what everybody's asking for. You know, Pranis and Toy Park, we're, we're known for our big portions, what we certainly have, but we also have a smaller portion menu. Yes, yes that's um, the nice yeah. part. Which is really popular. Right. right. You know, I've noticed we, we have gluten-free dishes on the menu that's mm -hmm. coming more and more popular. So there's a lot of little changes that we've made ov over the last several years, just trying to hold the tradition, but also try to stay up with the current trend, what's happening. Well, and of course, the, now you have a lot of uh, students with Hobart William Smith. You've yeah. got younger people coming and eating yeah. in the area that are going to be much more attuned to yeah. the health. You know, you cooking, have to stay with the times. You know, you know you or a fresh, it, you know, fresh. In, in farm to table and all those right. new new trends that are coming through. Well, a couple of the traditions that I've always enjoyed there is uh, your Italian pork chops, yeah. uh, which is done with uh, charbroiled pork chops with uh, hot peppers. Uh, mushrooms in a sherry wine right. sauce. Uh, great, great dish. Uh, it's a great dish. And then, if you like gizzards, Mar Marilyn loves <laughs> gizzards. <laughs> we, can, we can forget those. I used to eat them as when I was but young. But you know, and, and, and the gizzards, the giblets, you know, Gibbet. the best thing, I mean, I, I like them once in a while, but you can't eat a lot of those. No, no you no, can't. But the sauce that they're in. Yeah. I know. I mean, if you yeah. take that sauce and put it on some chicken or put it on some pasta, or I mean, just right. eat a loaf of bread. A loaf know. of bread, that's all right. you need. Right. Uh, the, <clears throat> so I remember those very fondly. And I remember uh, the uh, shrimp fra diablo. Yep. And it's nice and spicy. Right. And the greens and the beans. Right. And uh, you, 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 you do a French sauce uh, yep. uh, with a lot of things. A, bill, a very popular dish. Chicken yeah. French, haddock French, which, uh, which Pranis always did too. Yeah, right. You know, the veal French, the uh, Marcellas. You know, a lot of sautéed items, always popular, and and, um, and what, that's what we're trying to hold to, the tradition. Yeah, right. At the same time, we're trying to mix it up so we can keep up with the trends. Yeah. You know? And, and people, if you don't know what a French is, it, it's a, a sauce that is is wine and lemon and uh, a little garlic in there, too. Garlic. Because right? it's garlic and everything at Toy yeah. Park. Well, well, you, well can't, you can't cook without garlic. <laughs> it should be. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm really grateful, and I also I, I, I you have a stuffed rigatoni, yeah, ricotta uh, cheese, right? with a with with a vodka sauce, yeah, vodka sauce, uh, very popular. Yeah, dish. yeah no, that's so great. So you got dish. all these great things going. Yeah, uh, and so we, you got a, a a new chef in there. You're well, trying we, you to know, about a month ago, we were fortunate enough to um, hire a person that was new to the area, and um, he's from Philadelphia, and he's bringing some experience with him. And what I like about him, he understands where we are and who we are, and he he knows enough not to screw it up. Right. And yet, I know just from working with him for a couple of weeks that we're going to be able to learn some stuff from him. Well, that's you know, great. So he's going to introduce some new dishes, he's, uh, some new appetizers. Uh, he's going to start a bar menu, and eventually we're going to work towards our regular menu and, and make some changes. We're going to keep all our traditional stuff, keep it as is or better, <laughs> and uh, you know maybe introduce some new things to the menu. So we're excited about that. Well, yeah. I'm excited too. Uh, I, I say I, I I like like the way way when we go there, we like to eat what you got there. So it, but, it gets better. Holy right. mackerel! Right. That's, that's and you don't got to change things up. You got to yeah. learn. You got to get a little bit. And, so. right. and it'll certainly encourage us to go a few more. You know, yeah. <laughs> go a little bit sooner than we thought we would <laughs> That'd be yeah. great. to come and check it out. That'd yeah. be great. Uh, also, we should mention uh, some of the other. Restaurants that you own, Abigail's right. uh, in Waterloo. Right. Uh, then you have uh, over on five and twenty bagels and cakes. Bagels sure. and cakes. Right. Uh, 
Uh, and then you also manage... Like the we have the Geneva Country Club. We do the food and bar at the Geneva Country Club, oh, yeah. which is a nice location. Yeah. It overlooks the light. It yeah. is. It's very nice. It gives them a lot of free time this way, people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have, a, I have a really great wife. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. She, she's the one in charge there at the Bagels and Cake Store. As you know, Lloyd does a lot of wedding cakes. And yes. Yeah. A lot of pastries and desserts, and then it, the bake the the bagel shop is really an extension of Club Eighty Six, mm -hmm. uh, and Toy Park now with their takeouts for sauce and greens and beans and giblets and meatballs and stuffed shells, and yeah. and, and then we have the traditional college fair with uh, yeah. egg sandwiches and deli type of stuff. Now, does your wife do the strawberry cake? Yes, my there's a picture. If you ever come into the Club Eighty Six, there's a picture of my mother with a, a, the first strawberry cake that my mother made. And it, it's delicious, but it just doesn't look very good. Yeah. But Lori, who's very artistic, took that cake, oh. and all of a sudden she started doing basket weaves, yeah. and one thing led to another, and now she does wedding cakes. And the funny thing about the, the strawberry cake, you mentioned my father's chicken, Jimmy's chicken. You know, years ago we used to do caterings. And yeah. We used to do that little chicken ziti, meatball salad, dressing rolls, mm. butter, catering. And my father used to always throw on a strawberry cake. Never told him that was common, just said, here's the cake. Yeah. And now people, you know, when you say people call about how good the chicken is, now they keep telling me how good the, the strawberry cakes are. Right. So yeah. it kind of it kind of overshadowed the chicken a little bit. Mm. <laughs> well, well, we made a reservation for our Del Papa thing, uh, and they said, well, we want the chicken, but we want the strawberry cake, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, they had, they had to, because they all remembered, they <laughs> all grew... Go. Most of them lived, Jim didn't, he lived in Ithaca, but most of his cousins lived somewhere near the area, right. you know. Uh, right. So yeah. they all remember all of that. Very, very fine memories. A lot of, lot of tradition. Yeah. And, uh, well, we're, we're glad you, you got this thing <laughs> and keeping it going. I want to, uh, online, uh, you can go online, you can get some recipes that we have. And I mentioned uh, that we have this cauliflower cream which <coughs> Wegman put out, <coughs> and you basically are boiling cauliflower with a little salt and lemon and pureeing it. And it's amazing what happens to this when you use it in place of cream. Uh, and I've got a recipe on how to make the cauliflower, uh, cauliflower cream and how to use that as a cream sauce with some broccoli. Right. Uh, I have it, uh, another sauce uh, where you're using it uh, uh, with some great tomatoes uh, and and some chicken, uh, leftover chicken, maybe Jimmy's chicken. Yeah, well, you bring it home. And <laughs> Sounds you have, good. Right. <laughs> and you haven't finished it, you can put this in this new dish. I, I tell you, you, you're going to stick your nose up at it. Well, you look would. at it. Yeah. I did. I, I, I use it, I've used it, uh, mashed potatoes instead of cream. Put this in there. It's it's amazing yeah. so you got to try it remember you got to try it also my my youngest son uh, lives out on the west west coast uh has come up with a recipe for a a pasta sauce that basically he started this to make sure that his son would start eating some vegetables he put a lot of onions and carrots and tomatoes in it plus and, a, a bottle of wine uh, well yes but the, the alcohol cooks up yeah, that gives it, it gives right. it flavor and uh, he's come up with a recipe that we have where, and he's finding that when, he, when Max's friends come over, they just love the tomato, they love the sauce with the pasta. And it gives yeah, them it sounds, it sounds yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. Sounds great. Uh, so th th that recipe is in there. Make sure if you do that is there's onions and carrots in there and make sure you get them caramelized. That's the secret to this thing, plus using a lot of wine. And he, he uses a bottle of wine. I don't think all of it goes into the sauce. Yeah, maybe not. Really <laughs> <laughs> you always have to cook with a little wine, but, right? But those are online, uh, and uh, we, uh, we, we, you should take a look at them because they're, they're, try them. They're, they're good. I uh, want to mention what's, what's happening in the area uh, this, uh, this uh, next couple of weeks. The top thing on the uh, on the agenda. Well, this is a big week. It's induction at the National Women's Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah. And Bill, I you probably don't know, but I've been involved with this for years and years and years. So even a son and daughter-in-law are coming up to help work on the induction. So we're inducting ten people, very interesting people. We have the four. Uh, she's in her seventies now, but the youngest person that uh, was in the Little Rock uh, Nine. 
and she's coming and being inducted. Uh, we have the person that has started um, the Conan breast cancer cure. She's coming, the founder of that. So we have, we're inducting eight or 10 people. Eight of them are living and will be with us. For right. the, and then uh, one who has passed away that's coming is Graham, right? The dancer. Well, Martha Graham is yeah. the, one of them. And on Thursday in Geneva, they're having the premiere of a movie called The Suffragette at the Smith Opera right. House. The tickets are free. You can just call the Smith Opera House. And this movie is not out yet. This is, is about the suffragettes in England. And, and that was right. a pretty uh, tumultuous it, time in what they did and uh, what they had to do to get the vote. And is it Merle, Merle Streep? Meryl Streep is in it, and <coughs> yes. Okay. So you might want to check and, that out. Um, <coughs> yeah. Also, uh, locally, SEP is uh, doing a play called Dead Metaphor, and we went to see it, and it is very good. That's going to be on this coming weekend. You should try that. Uh, there's a seafood festival going on at Toro Run Winery, which is a new winery over on 89, uh, and they've got lobster, shrimp, clams, chowder, and Brazilian beef. If you ever, uh, Brazilian barbecued beef. Brazilian beef uh, is the, really the secret of it is the sauce is completely different than just uh, the regular the barbecue. barbecue. Uh, you might want to check that out. And right next door is a brewery that you, after you've eaten all this food and drank all the wine, you can go over to the brewery and they got a celebration there. So we got a lot of things happening in the community and you surely should take advantage of them before this S-N-O-W comes. Well, let's hope not too soon. So, Bill, do you have any, uh, Belly, do you have anything more you would like to tell us about? No, I just, you know, thanks for inviting me down. It's a great show here, so thank, well, thanks for giving the opportunity to be on it. And we encourage you, the, everyone, to try Tory Park. Thank it you. really yeah. is yeah. Yeah. exceptional. In fact, someone asked me uh, uh, that had moved recently in the last couple of years, where you would go to eat in Geneva, and I said, "Oh, I think you should take them to Tory Park." They came back; they just raved. Oh, good, good. So, that's great. It, it, well, you have great. to rave. It's good food. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> good food. And so. if Billy is there when 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 you go, he will sing for you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> well. Thank you very much. Well, for thank coming. you guys. Really. Right. This was, and, this was uh, nice of you to ask me. Uh, uh, well, it's our that. pleasure. Yes. And uh, enjoy. We will uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. We might. I'm not sure what we're going to do in a couple of weeks. We'll get to it. We'll let you know. <laughs> All, right. All right. Depends on our friends. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, so uh, have a good week. Ciao.